most of us here are in sales, right? Like, and so if we don't take action, nothing will happen. And um, we got to move the needle. Bill and I have, a, we say this every time we meet, just move the needle like 1% a day, move the needle 1% a day. And uh, the power of consistency, we, we just became extremely consistent. So I know if I meet with Bill, we're going to move the needle, right? So what do I do? I just meet with Bill. That's easy, right? And I move the needle every day because that's just who I became. Wake up, go to the gym, these same routines. You do the same routine that you do every day. And then, um, you know, then you'll reach your, your financial goals, whatever, whatever they are, whether it's raising capital by multifamily to do more real estate deals, to maybe transition out of your W2 job, to sell more pool maintenance equipment. It's all the same. So today I want to talk about a few things, content marketing. That's why we're all here, right? Um, Bo alluded to, we're going to talk a little bit about chat GPT. And I think this is where we're probably going to spend a lot of time because it's new. It's interesting. Everybody's talking about it, um, but it's not everything. It's not the be all end all, but it certainly helps, especially if you aren't good on video, don't want to be on video, can't think of what to say, can't think of what to write. If you're doing like a blog post or, or whatever, it can help. It can help a lot. Um, we're going to talk about how, how we rank videos and web pages. Talk a little bit, very briefly, about tools and resources because it always comes up when I give these uh, uh, talks. Um, I want to touch on newsletters, how important they can be, and the fact that they're kind of a forgotten thing. Uh, a lot of people don't even use newsletters, and you may not even know what a newsletter is in 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 the way I'm about to describe it. And then we can we can have Q and A at the end, or we can just have questions back and forth as we go along. So, any questions so far? Anything you want to cover? Anything you don't want to cover? Because I can cross it off the list. All right. Um, a little bit about me. I've been doing this internet marketing stuff since about 2009, but I really started in about 1996 when the web was just a couple years old. And I started a computer consulting business where I was dealing kind of like knee deep in tech or probably more like neck deep, neck deep in tech. But I transitioned around 2009 and I've been doing that ever since. So that's that's the brief story on me. Um, content marketing. We'll talk about what it is in a minute. But the only thing you really need to know about it is ABC. Can you remember that? I think you can remember that. All right. What's it stand for? always be creating and if you don't like video you don't have to do video can you write can you photograph can, you know there's a lot of different ways to create content what we focused on is video first and blogging second but that doesn't have to be you but you are going to have to create content i think if you want to get ahead because most people don't like doing it it's going to set you apart. All right. So what is content marketing? And I'm not going to read this to you verbatim, but um, it's a it's a term that was coined, I want to say, or at least popularized around 2010. And it's basically a strategic marketing approach. It's not just like publishing what comes to your mind. This is not a blog per se where, you know, in, in the early days of blogging, it was basically an online diary. Well, we're not talking about that now. We're talking about very strategic um, content creation um, that has a targeted audience, has calls to calls to action, and has a, a, a kind of a very solid purpose. So it's it's focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content. And that's what we do with video. You can do that with a blog best of both worlds is you do both. All right. So I kind of mentioned this just a minute ago. And what is the essence of good content marketing? Well, it targets a defined audience. So you need to know who your audience is. And if you've ever heard the term uh, avatar, who's your, who's your avatar? You know, you think of one specific person that would be purchasing or renting or using your services or your products who are they you know what do they do what kind of makes them tick how old are they man woman male female 
Um, what do they do for hobbies? What do they do for their income? What do they, what do they, what, you know, kind of what makes them tick? Um, and once you have that defined audience, um, you can get a lot of traffic and we're going to kind of touch on that in a minute. Um, a lot of times you can get a lot of traffic by creating like a sensational video. Let's just think about TikTok for a minute, right? If you make a great viral video on TikTok, you'll get a lot of traffic. You'll get a lot of eyeballs, but you may not get a lot of revenue or a lot of booked calls or a lot of appointments or whatever it is your goal is. You may not get that because you didn't target your, you, you didn't hit the right target audience. And it's great for vanity when you get a million views on TikTok or YouTube, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't get you to where you want to go business wise, it's, you're going to get discouraged and you're probably going to stop after a while. Next part is it has a specific call to action. Every single piece of content you create has to explicitly tell your viewer or your audience to do something. And if it doesn't, they won't do it. Like if you, you know, watch any infomercial on TV, right? Call now, click here, whatever. They're telling the audience what to do. And it's it, it, it sounds dumb, but if you don't tell them what to do, they won't do it. And then ideally it gets the click, right? So you tell them what to do and they go do it. That's great. You get to decide what their journey is to an extent. You're leading them down a path or a funnel in marketing speak. And um, you got to be very specific and very targeted and very, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word right now, but it has to be specific and targeted and uh, focused. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to shift into chat GPT, chat GPT, and I'm not going to tell you what all those acronyms mean, but chat GPT is a chat bot designed as kind of an overlay for a company called open AI and open AI essentially took a huge data set bunch of data, text, photos, videos, what have you. And they, they trained their artificial intelligence on, you know, on, on this data set. And chat GPT is a way for you to talk, to literally talk, you type in, to literally talk to um, the AI, and it will deliver um, some output. And sometimes it's most times it's great. Sometimes it's factually incorrect in certain areas. So it's important that you read what it produces so that you don't publish it and look like a dummy. Okay. But it does happen. So um, there's the URL right there, chat.openai.com forward slash chat. You do have to uh, register and it's free for now. Um, they do have a premium kind of subscription-based subscription, subscription -based, uh, plan that's out there that supposedly promises, or at least that does promise, that you're going to have fewer, you know, shorter wait times, fewer errors, because it's heavily used. I think in the first five days or something, it had over a million users. And in the first month, it had something like 100 million users. It's the fastest growing app in history. Have you guys used it? Has any of you used it out there yet? Yeah, Ken and I both used it. We used it. Uh, I used it today for, for something, and it took me a few minutes to get in because um, there were too many users logged in. So that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if Bill's going to give us a, a, a demo. I will. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, but watch what I want you guys to see what Bill does with a prompt. You guys will be blown away, I think, if you see what what a prompt will do but anyways right. we'll, we'll save that i'll just give you a little treat yeah um so as bo said in the opening there there are some things you need to do with chat gpt to get the best possible output for you it's all in the prompt as he said it's a chat bot you type to it it types back 
um, and it, it, it types back in response to your prompt. The interesting thing is it feels like you're talking to a human. It doesn't feel like a, a you know, have you ever seen like a chat bot on a Facebook page where you type something in and, and you know, you think you're going to talk to the page owner and automated, an automated uh, reply happens right away. And it sometimes it looks really unnatural. These, these don't feel like that. So you can actually have kind of a quasi conversation with a chat bot. You can say, hey, I, I want to know, or let's talk about um, the pool maintenance business. And it will, it will say, okay, and it'll tell you what that means, what it thinks it means, and you can have a conversation with it. And you can try, kind of lead it down the path. Okay, what are the top five things a pole maintenance company should do to market their services? And it'll come back with, a, with an answer. And you can go, okay, for number two, you know, this, the, the second option of the five that it gave you, for number two, tell me more about that. And it will tell you more about that. Okay, I don't understand the part in paragraph two, the third sentence. It will go, okay, this is what it means. And it, and it will just completely flesh it out for you. And it remembers, I don't know if that's the right word, but it seems like it remembers what you're talking about. Right. Um, it's very, very interesting. Um, you got to be very specific with it, though. The more specific you can be in your prompt, the better the results you'll get. So if you're not getting, so here's an example. I wanted to learn about how to create a Chrome extension, a Chrome browser extension. I'd made them before, but I wanted to hear what they, what, what chat GPT gave back. And it was pretty good. So I got real specific and I said, I want you to make me an extension that does X, Y, and Z. And it would give me the actual code. And then I would say, well, what it doesn't do is it doesn't do, you know, number one, which number one equals whatever. And it would come back with revised code. And I did that for about half an hour until I got what I wanted. Um, so it took a little bit of time, but think about if I wanted to create a Chrome extension and, and paid somebody to do it on, on you know, one of the... Uh, uh, you know, one of the, um, what do they call them? Upwork. Upwork, yeah, like Upwork. Fiverr. Yeah. yeah, Fiverr, Upwork, whatever. If I wanted to create a custom Chrome extension, it would cost me hundreds of dollars, if not more, probably. And it would take a lot of back and forth because they deliver a product, I'd try it out and it wouldn't work. And then I'd have to go back to them. So it'd be a lot of back and forth and, and it's kind of a pain. Anyway, that was very interesting, but I got to what I wanted to get to after about 30 minutes. So that was, that was cool. Um, and as I just said, you can, you can refine the conversation. You could really drill down into different things. So like, if you say, give me the top 10, you know, things I need to know about quality pool filters, for example, it would give them back to me and you being the expert in your field, you would know, okay, yeah, that's, that's correct that's accurate and then you you might say well tell me more about that type of filter or tell me more about this type of filter and you might know all of all of this stuff but now it's in a in a written form that you can copy and paste into word or whatever and then refine it you know give it your voice um put your spin on it nice. um correct things that are not necessarily you know 100 percent accurate um but it's a good start and a lot of us a lot of us aren't good at writing. We have it in our head, but we don't know how to get it on paper. This might be a good way for you to translate what's in your head to chat GPT, who puts it back on digital paper that you can copy and paste and put on, put in a document. Then you can read it and go, yeah, that makes sense. I like it. Or I need to change this, tweak that, whatever. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to give you a few examples here. The first one is what I call keyword clusters. And this is a way that, th this is a method or a skill that, that Bo and I have had to master in order to get his videos 
not only ranked on YouTube, but actually to become effective. So it's a good way to brainstorm and organize your content marketing plan. So let me see if I can do this. This right here is kind of, um, this is not your native chat GPT screen. This over here is on the left-hand side, but this stuff is not, uh, is not normal. It's actually a Chrome extension. This is what gave me the idea to make my own. Um, but this is a Chrome extension that you can use. It's free to um, deliver a whole bunch of prompts. So I'm going to go to the tool I actually like to use, which is a little Google sheet that I've put together. I'm going to see if I can find it here. Um, so I've got it on a tab called Keyword Strategy. And if you're interested, I can give you the URL to this and you can use this for yourself. So I have a part <laughs> where, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, let's do let's do something in the uh, um, pool maintenance with the prompt, just because yep. we have Michelle and Ken, Ken in here. Man, thank you, because there's like seven real estate agents <laughs> yeah. and uh, one pool guy. There's, I feel like I'm pretty special here, Bo, thank you. <laughs> yeah. We Let's can dive into a couple. So if you, put this, if you put the seed keyword keyword phrase here, it populates it over here, and I copy that. And then I go back to Chat GPT, and I paste that in. And it'll take a few minutes, but essentially what happens here is it's going to make you a table that has these keyword clusters in it. So think about I want to. You know, I talked about 100 videos, right, before you see results, and I'm not lying. I've seen this in many, many of my own clients. It takes 75 to 100, sometimes more, to start seeing actual results, like good results. So you got to stick with it, but and it's hard to come up with, with, uh, with ideas, right? But what you can do is do something like this, where it's creating a bunch of keyword clusters for you, and... We'll let it finish here in a minute, but essentially you're going to take some of this information and you can, like I, like I told you before, how you can refine your prompts. Right. Once you get this table, you can say, tell me more about X, right? So it's actually given us a lot of information here. This is pretty cool. What did you actually type in there? My eyes are not, I can't read the screen as good. Um, yeah, this is good. Big, this is long, good. Long. <laughs> it's a really long prompt. So it says, please, please ignore all previous instructions. Well. I want you to respond only in language English. I want you to act as a market research yeah. expert that speaks and writes fluent English. And he goes on and on and on. That's, oh, that's I got this, is, this is what his prompt is. Right. And then we just change out the words, right? Right. Yep. Okay. So it says, I hope this information, information helps you create a successful SEO content strategy for keyword Pool maintenance. Let me know if you need any further assistance. Okay, so let's look at the table. So the keyword phrase, the main keyword phrase is, is pool maintenance, right? So they got maintenance here. But here's oh, sorry. keyword clusters that 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 came to mind for chat GPT. Regular pool maintenance, pool maintenance cost, pool maintenance schedule. Chemical balance and pool maintenance, pool maintenance tools, do-it-yourself pool maintenance, pool maintenance tips, hiring a pool maintenance professional. That's the one for you. Um, but that's where you want to lead everybody, right? I've we found that if you tell people how to, if you show people how to do things like themselves, some people will do things themselves, but most people will actually hire somebody because they don't have the time or the experience or the or the confidence. Right. So pool maintenance during winter, right? Yeah. Checklist. You can get a lot of play out of checklists. But let's look, let's look at one, which one of these like kind of strikes your fancy. There's so well, many. yeah, there's and not so much the tips, but uh I think I think as far as uh I, I mean selling equipment, equipment installations and uh and sales, I, I want to drive equipment repairs. Okay, okay. Um, so we don't have a lot of repair information in here. So we could say, tell me about. Or like upgrade, equipment upgrades. Equipment. Automation. Upgrades. Yeah. 
and it's starting to type away. So I'll, I'll read it as it scrolls. Pool equipment upgrades refer to the process of replacing or upgrading the various components and systems in a swimming pool in order to improve its performance, efficiency, and overall functionality. This can include upgrades to the pool's filtration system, pumps, heaters, lighting, and other features. And it goes on and on. Right. Um, so you can say, uh, you know, tell yeah. me more about filtration system upgrades. So I can put Ken in front of a camera on you and upload this to YouTube verbatim reading this, what it says. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. So, so then, so then what you're going to want to do is this going to help create ideas. Then you're going to say, what do, well, what are the top five SEO titles uh, for a YouTube video? I don't know, Bill, how would you word that? We're going to show you how to create the titles. And you're going to go and you're going to figure out what are the titles you're going to do. And then Ken's going to start a channel called uh, Ken the Pool Guy, right? We're going to create a little thumbnail on, on YouTube. And then Ken the Pool Guy is going to, what Bill was talking about earlier, I think is important, is, is sometimes, Ken, you're going to just do routine like maintenance things. And you're going to shoot a little three-minute video on how to do some basic stuff that you're you know not going to do. And right. then, oh, by the way, if you're looking for this... Uh, so you could probably riff on some of these titles. Like you get the title, you know enough about this stuff. You yeah, totally. Title, Tweak it. You can start going nuts. You can go, right. okay, the secret to a low maintenance, high performance pool, upgraded equipment. These are the top five things I would suggest you do to have better, you know, uh, performing pool equipment. This Bill, gonna, Bill, do you yeah. remember that? Do you remember that guy that did like, he wrote like blogs about pools and he sold like the most pools. I can't remember. Yeah, he, he wrote like a bunch of, all he did on his site was he answered questions. That's it. And huh. he sold like hundreds of, he was the first to like blog about the pool, like, you know, like what types of pools are the best. And he ended up selling like more pools than anybody and like made millions of dollars from doing this. This was yeah. back before blogging was blogging. But so anyways, we're doing the same thing, but on YouTube. So the idea though, just, just so you, you keep in mind, this is giving us ideas to create mm -hmm. content. This table right here is great for if you're a blogger, because you can take anyone, you can take all of these and say, I can create a blog post around this called how much does full maintenance cost a breakdown? I know that varies from market to market, but still mm -hmm. how to create an effective pool maintenance schedule. Who doesn't want to know that, right? If you have a pool, you want to, you want to keep it maintained because we all know what happens when you don't. Right. <laughs> um, the importance of chemical balance and pool maintenance, right? The must have tools for pool maintenance. And it even gives you like a little meta description here with a call to action. Get ready to tackle any pool maintenance task with our comprehensive list of must have tools. From skimmers to brushes, we've got you covered. Read now. Think about that blog post or, or YouTube uh, video. You're gonna put affiliate links in there from say Amazon, or maybe you have an affiliate relationship with a pool supply company. Right where you get a, a cut of commissions or whatever, maybe you resell, you're going to put the links to those products that you talk about in your video and or in your blog in those posts or in those videos. And you're going to, you know, you're going to get some commissions or some sales. Right. Nice. So it's, it's a really cool tool. Um, and I mean, I can show you tons, tons and tons and tons of, 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 practical uses. Watch um, this. Bill, yeah. I just have one question. So the chat is essentially more for the expert, so to speak. It's not for the consumer. It's not, it's not for the consumer to do a Q and a, and it's more for uh, uh, to stimulate ideas for us in our marketing. Well, that's how we're using it, but okay. there's a lot of concern at the Google headquarters right now that this could take a bite out of their search volume and their ad revenue because people are actually using this instead of going to Google and asking, you know, how do I, uh, you know, how do I balance the pH in my pool? Instead of going to Google, people are going here and they're getting the answers and they're not, they're not half bad. 
I mean, they're good. They're good because essentially this artificial intelligence was, was trained on like terabyte upon terabyte upon terabyte of data set. And they're actually in the, they're, they're, they're transitioning to the next big data set, which is like, it's reported to be, I don't know, I think it was 10 or a hundred or a thousand times bigger. So it's going to get smarter. And the one drawback, if you could call it a drawback to chat GPT right now is it's only up to date through 2021. So if you're going to ask it something like who won the Indy 500 in 2022, it's not going to know. It's just not, it doesn't know because it's not part of its data set. Mm. So if you ask Google, you're going to get the answer. If you ask this, you're going to, it's going to say, I don't know. It might tell you where to go to find the answer though, which is kind of cool. Yeah, Google but, it. <laughs> but the, the newest data set is going to be up through current and it's going to be much, much larger. So it's going to get better and better and better. And eventually at some point, if not already, you're going to be able to input like you're going to be able to feed it a video you did or a blog post you did or a, or a written paper that you did and it's going to be able to it's going to be able to incorporate your quote unquote voice not your actual well your literal voice but also the way you speak the way you talk the way you write words it's going to be able to spit out content in that in in your as if you did it so, so part of your prompt, like for a real estate agent, I want to give like examples for people here. So if you're a real estate agent, your prompt, uh, part of your prompt could be pretend you are a top producing real estate agent in Scottsdale, Arizona, and you're writing an article about um, the, um, well, it's not going to know new events, but um, you're, you're writing an article about what's a neighborhood in Scottsdale, Arizona. I don't know. Um, let me look. Just to make it relevant, uh, Scott's oh, or did you say Scottsdale, Arizona luxury market? So you know you can just start getting hyper, and this is going to give you. It's going to start springing ideas for you. And the cool thing is if you can marry this with, you know, what you can find on the internet through Google or Bing, and I want to talk about Bing in a minute, and I'll talk about Google in a minute too, because they're, they're not resting. They're badass. They need to do, they need to keep up and they're, and they will. Um, they're not going to lose any money off over this if it's up to them. Um, if you can marry this with what you can find on the web, say on Wikipedia or maybe a real estate industry, you know, uh, website that has a lot, a lot of facts and, and, and whatnot. If you can marry those two things together and add your voice, add your own unique spin to it, you know, the whole idea, and, and I don't remember who said it, um, but somebody, uh, somebody said they wanted to be a resource and, um, that's what you're doing here. You're you're you be, you're becoming a resource for people to go to when they don't have the answer. Instead of going to Google, they're gonna find they're gonna go to Google. They're gonna find your site because Google thinks yours is the best content. They're gonna find your site. They're gonna find that web page and they're gonna read it and they're gonna consume it and they're gonna do whatever it is you tell them to do. Right. So here's the output. Scottsdale, Arizona, a thriving luxury real estate market. That's a pretty good title. Scottsdale, Arizona is a city that is well known for its beautiful desert landscape, warm climate, and high-end luxury homes. In recent years, the Scottsdale luxury real estate market has been booming, making an attractive destination for home buyers seeking a luxurious lifestyle in the Southwest. One of the key factors driving the growth of the Scottsdale luxury real estate market is its strong eco economy. The and then you could you could actually give facts and figures here, right? Another factor contributing to the growth of the Scottsdale luxury real estate market is the city's desirable location. It's located in the heart of the Sonoran Desert. I don't know if that's true. I think it is. Providing residents with breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains and desert landscapes. Additionally, the city is just a short drive from Phoenix, providing residents with easy access to all the amenities and attractions in the big city. 
it goes on and on. <laughs> so you can expand on any one of these things Very cool. and make it better and make it you. Does that make sense? And you would want to, right? I mean, otherwise, I don't know what the likelihood of someone else wanting to inquire about luxury real estate in Arizona, but it wouldn't, would it spit out the same blog? Well, I think what you want to really do, <laughs> I think what Michelle, what you really want to do is, is long tail keywords. So like if you're a real estate agent, if you're a real estate agent, um, like let's say here in Las Vegas, uh, I could do a video blog about homes for sale in Inspirata, which is a master plan community, right? Now you're getting more specific. So you're kind of niching down. That's how people start finding you for relevant stuff. Like when I do SBA financing, I might do how to finance a restaurant with an SBA 7A loan, right? Now nobody else is, is really the authority in that space. And I start clustering the content around that. That's how you end up, you're, you're, you're being found. So I, I started a new chat, gave it the same prompt. It's similar, but it, it is different. It's markedly different. So when you throw in, you want to house us with swimming pools and close to a golf course. So that sums up uh, Arizona, right? Right, right. <laughs> so that, that, you know, that's pretty interesting. And, and so it, to answer your question, going back to your question, um, consumers can use it too. And consumers use it a lot. That there, it, it is somewhat taking the place of Google search for a lot of people, just like YouTube search has taken the place of Google search for a lot of people. Like Bo said, whenever I want to learn how to do something, like I'm really cheap and I don't like taking my car to a mechanic and I'm fairly mechanically inclined and I have new cars. So you'd think I'd be like, oh, I don't want to touch them void the warranty or whatever. Well, I don't care. Um, I watch a YouTube video and as long as it's not like unbolting engine parts, <laughs> taking out chiming, timing chains and stuff, I'm doing it. Um, and I've learned how to say, I, I've literally saved thousands of dollars by doing my own repairs in a couple hours at the most, mm -hmm. just by watching a YouTube video because somebody, all, somebody's already done it, you know, and most of the video, well, I shouldn't say most, Many of the videos that I find on YouTube related to car repair for a specific model of car, they're actually done by car repair shops because they want you to buy the parts from them. And if you're local, they want you to drive up. Well, I'm not going to drive up, but I might buy the parts from you. You know, and, and it's essentially affiliate, affiliate products that they're selling something from Amazon, which I don't have a problem buying car parts from Amazon as long as they're OEM, you know. So that's how I use it. And now if I could use this to get similar or, or faster answers, because what's tough with search is you get back a whole lot of results. And how do you know which one is good and which one is bad? Now you're kind of taking it on faith that the information you get back from this is factual, but for the most part, it is going to be factual because it's, it's trained. I, I have a high degree of confidence that it's trained on factual information. Now, can it be gamed? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm sure in the future, somebody will figure out if they haven't already to, to kind of like insert crappy data into those data sets. And it, it's, you know, it, it's quality gets worse and worse. But. Question again. Yeah. Um, so what I, so I have a website, would I add it to my website? And if so, how would I go about that? Oh, so, so you would type in a prompt for like a blog post. Let me show you this one while I talk through this, because I think this is, is <laughs> very interesting. Uh, let's do So this is basically creating a, an entire blog post, right? So this one is about pull system equipment upgrades. And what I would do with this information and what I, what I do for multiple clients now is um, I will take this output 
copy and paste it into Word, uh, tweak it, add my own, you know, take on things, my own information. If I see something that's not quite right or doesn't sound quite right, I fix it. I put in uh, links to other blog posts on my own site. So we're interlinking so that it's easier for people to find related information. It's also easier for the search engines to index my site. We'll talk about that in the ranking part in a minute. Um, but I would take this output, paste it into something, edit it, and then I would put that in my blog. So this is almost done. Is that making sense so far? Yeah, totally. And, and there's a lot you have to use certain tools to help you rank your video. It's going to optimize your, your blog post for search. So there's certain tools like we use TubeBuddy, for example, for YouTube to help us rank our videos and it tells us how to optimize them. So we're more likely to get found in search on page one. Did you guys see that one interesting thing is chat GPT sometimes just stops, it just <laughs> stops. And you have to tell it to continue or keep going. And it does. It picks up right where it left off. I don't know why it does that. Interesting. So at the end of the day, what he's telling you here is you can quickly write a good blog. It's going to take you another 20 or 30 minutes or it takes Bill five minutes to edit. And then it goes, he, he pastes that into the, the, the uh, WordPress web, um, blog. And then he edits it for uh, SEO components. Right. Oops. Too sure. The wrong thing in there. Sorry. Okay. So what I would do is something like this. It's pretty well formatted. I need to make this bigger so I can see it. Um, but essentially, I would obviously take out the subtopic one, but I would call this like automation systems or whatever. And I would call this filtration systems or whatever. I'd make it a little catchier maybe. Um, but if I didn't know how to do that, I would I would just go into chat GPT and, and say, give me an alternative subheading for automation systems. And it would spit back something that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I might want to like tell you what this is advanced control systems with intuitive interfaces i don't know what that means but um, i would i would expand on that i would expand on this 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 and then when i was done making all my edits i would just copy and paste that into my wordpress blog i'm not going to do that here but um it it comes out as a perfectly formatted wordpress blog nice and I think a lot of it too is before you're doing all this stuff about the blogs, you're not just blogging a blog, you're blogging for your avatar. So we're like, we're going back and forth and we're thinking of, of keywords and we're doing like, we're going onto YouTube, we're using uh, Google search and we're figuring out like what, what's being searched, right? Like the basics, because we want to create our blogs around, we're already thinking about who's going to find this blog, right? Like, it's not like we're doing a random blog. We know who that people will be searching for this. So this is kind of getting into the whole website ranking stuff, but it all bleeds over because at the end of the day, whatever we produce, we want people to see and then act on it. If they don't see it, they can't act on it. And the only way they're going to see it is if Google or Bing or another search engine that whatever your user uses ranks it. Look at the top one as a blog, right? Smart in-ground pool. Upgrades. Yeah, know that like over 80% of, uh, how shall I say this? Oh, I'll, search say, I'll say it the easy way. Most people don't go to the second page of Google when they type something right. in. Now, Google's trying to change that because if you notice, they're not giving just 10 results anymore. It's an endless page. It just keeps on going. You don't have to click the next page anymore. Sometimes you have to click this, but there's probably, I don't know, a hundred results here. So that's going to kind of help people who are ranked in the top 20 instead of the top 10, because it used to be, you wanted to be number one or number two on Google because people did 80% of search volume for, for a given keyword. This is like a few years ago went to the first like 
two or three re results on Google. And then the 20% so, scraps were left over for people four through 10. And then like 1% were people for, on the second page. I mean, it was, it's, it's, it's pretty lopsided, but wa watch this. So I, this was my keyword phrase that I'm trying to rank for, right? Pull maintenance, upgrade, upgrade equipment. Watch this. There's this thing in Google called people also ask. Right. And the, this is a little extension. It's called a uh, minion. I want to write that down. Um, it goes through instead of you going through and finding all the people also ask questions in the little drop downs, it goes through and finds them for you. Hmm. Right. And they do it. And I don't like this view, but they do it like, uh, come on. It's not working right now. I can't scroll, but that's not very helpful. Um, let me show you the, the spreadsheet. So this is going to give you new blogs, Michelle, right? All, all that are being searched within this relevancy. So you then are going to create multiple short form videos or blogs. So what you see here is this was the, this was the keyword phrase I, I typed into Google. Around that, people asked what pull upgrades are worth the money. That would be a great blog post or a YouTube video, right? Hey, the best bang for your bucket in upgraded pull equipment is... And then you list it and then you tell people why. What equipment do you need to maintain a pool? Well, probably anybody who has a pool knows that, but what if you don't have a pool and you're looking to buy a pool? If you're looking to buy a pool, you're going to need to know this stuff. Can I upgrade my pool pump motor? I'm sure you can, but why would you? What's it going to get you? Can I upgrade my pool filter? Of course. Now, if you look at this like second tier, so this is based on, so if I were to go into Google and ask what pull upgrades are worth the money, which is this first question, which spawned off of this question, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to say these four or five things. What is the lowest maintenance pool system? How do I modernize my pool? How can I save money to maintain my pool? How do I maintain a pool for beginners? Or how do you maintain a pool for beginners? Can I do my own pool maintenance? You know, you, you have 48 you know, questions here that you could answer on YouTube or in a blog post or better yet in both because you, you kind of have two, two viable channels for lead gen, right? Mm -hmm. YouTube and, and, and the, and the web. Why not, why not dominate both? Bo and I have created content where we rank high on Google and high on YouTube for the same subject. Yeah, we, we rank high as well, uh, but we, we pay someone to do it for us. And so, yeah, I've got to learn how to do it myself. <laughs> well, okay, so like what search terms do you rank for? Like, okay, so you guys are, what markets do you serve? You serve uh, so if Vacaville? You, if, you, if you typed in that, that one search that you had right now, just add uh, Napa and Solano County. Okay, just do. Or you can say Vacaville, Fairfield. Fairfield. And who are you? North, North Bay Wa North Bay Water Services. And go to Solano County because we're primarily in Solano. We're in the Napa. No, no, no. You gotta be taking more of these classes. So Okay, well, our focus is not pool equipment, and that's what he wants it to be. So uh, just, just type in pool service. Just type okay, in there we go. Pool service. All right. Let's go. Come on, come Obviously on. Obviously, we don't do a lot of blogging around pool equipment, which is what we need to do. Right. <laughs> to sell it. To sell it. Okay. No, we should be we should be up in there pretty <laughs> should be in the top 10. We normally are. So that's interesting. It's right there. Uh no. Which one is it? And yeah, the, yeah. It says about us, North Bay Water Services, but that's not it. That's, that's uh, not it. Um, no. but that is in there. It should be it should say blog dot mdws.com is our site, but it's there it is. Did Go back up. That? Keep on going up. No, that's where we were. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. yeah. But, that's their website though. Right? 
It does, but it just takes you to the about us. But the, no, yeah. you're still ranking though. That's right. That's okay. Yeah. So how many down are they? They're not far down. I mean, it's it's probably in the top ten. One. But you, if you guys implement some of these strategies, you're going to rank all over. We've but, got we've got a lot of we've probably got the most. Uh, now, re- would this make a difference whether someone's using Chrome or a different search engine? Because I know if I'm in Chrome, which I often use, and I do a basic search for pool service, that we are at the top. But this is through Google. It, it'd be different. I know. It'd probably be different in Bing, but not. Yeah, like, but eighty nine or eighty eighty nine percent of the searches are on on Google, not Bing. Right. Only six six or seven percent of searches are on on Bing. You want to be ranked. Chrome first. is Google. Chrome is still Google. Yeah. Yeah. So, so pu- there's there's a lot of factors that go into where you see yourself in search and where I would see yourself in search or see you in search, where Bo would see you in search. We're all three of us are going to get different results. Right. It's part of its. Problem. And oh, I think it has to do also with with the geo, right? Like you yes. guys are in a different location. Right. Hey. right. Well, we can we can go incognito, and then it wouldn't matter. Yeah. yeah. But we don't have to go there. But, but the point but the, is, is the the point the point is what you want to do is you want to. You don't want to rank for one term. You want to rank for all of them. <laughs> um, and the way you do that is you create content about all of them in a way that they're related. Remember those keyword clusters? Yeah. You could take each one of those keyword clusters and make its own keyword cluster and then take one of those keyword clusters and make its own. So you're building this pyramid mm-hmm. and let's say you're doing five, 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 and five, right? So you've got five at the top and then you've got five coming off each one. So that's 25 more, right? And then you've got five coming off each one of those 25. That's what, 150 posts or whatever, let's just say. Um, What you're doing with those bottom five, well, those bottom 25 or whatever, is you're linking to its related clusters and linking up to, and those are... linking up to its cluster so that at the end of the day, that top thing you want to rank for, whatever it is, could be widgets, right? Blue widgets. I sell blue widgets. That's what I want to rank for. You're never going to rank for that. Let's take a real world example, weight loss. You're never going to rank number one for weight loss. You just aren't. Okay. Right. Until you become like Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers or whatever, right? But what you can do is you can create lots of content underneath that specific demographics for weight loss, specific diets for weight loss, specific, you know, whatever. If you go deep enough, you're going to start ranking for those longer tail keywords, such as I just had a baby and I want to lose the last 10 pounds of baby weight. Somebody who types that in wants an answer. They're not going to just, you know, somebody types in, I, I need to lose weight. They may, not, may or may not want to lose weight, really. They may, they may not be desperate. I need to lose five pounds for a wedding. That's somebody who wants to lose five pounds in like three weeks or whatever, right? The intent is there. What you can do as a small business owner is you can rank for those, all those long tail keywords. And eventually those long tail keywords get enough search volume get enough people on your page that Google starts to recognize you and goes, oh, I'm going to give a little bit more weight to that website. And then those next tier keyword phrases that are a little bit harder to rank for, they're going to start ranking and then so on and so on until eventually maybe you won't be number one in weight loss, but you'll be, let's just say in the top 10, top 15, right? And it's even easier in YouTube. It's way easier in YouTube. I don't know if I don't know if the big players uh, like in the weight loss industry are doing much on YouTube. To be honest, the people who are getting the the views and the attention on YouTube are real people who are writing about real things and re- real results and real methods. So it's just easier to do this stuff on YouTube. It's quicker, but you got to put the work in. You got to create the content. 
Like you're not, you're probably not going to be able to create one video and see a million views, but you might be able to create a hundred videos and see a hundred thousand views. Then you got to ask yourself, you know, what is each one of those views worth or how many views does it take for me to get a client? Probably not a lot. If they're in your, like if they're in Solano County and they have a pool and they're asking a question that you answered, you're going to get, you're going to get the click. And if you, you know, you're nice people, people are going to know, like, and trust you from the video. They're, they're probably going to click on your, whatever call to action you have in your video. Right, Bo? That's right. That's right. So there's a lot of ways to do it. I mean, it really just takes action. I think you got to like, we're, we're, we're working on the pool business guys, but you got to take whatever your business is. We've got, um, we've got Derek who raises capital from, you know, uh, limited partners. So he's looking for accredited investors. So you got to kind of engineer where your avatars are going to be. And then kind of what we do too, right? Like, over the years, I've had these meetup groups, right? So a lot of the people in the meetup groups that they need to borrow money, they're going to come to me. So we do kind of like a multi prong approach. Like if I was like, for example, if like, if I was Derek, I would have a meetup group for catering to um, uh, accredited investors and then do like educational things, right? And then just build a bunch of people that have a net worth of great 1 million or greater, not counting the primary residence. And I would build that list. And then then I would also do, you know, videos around you know, investing as a limited partner in a syndication and the processes, right? And then you start ranking those videos and then you become the authority in the niche, right? And so I made, we're, we just literally, I taught myself how to do SBA financing. And over the years now I'm becoming the authority in the niche online by answering specific questions. It's pretty simple. For you real estate people, um, when I was in healthcare, we used a uh, app called One Day, and you can go to oneday.com, and um, it wasn't senior industry uh, related. It was, you can use it specifically for real estate um, and other industries, not necessarily pool service, but it is a great way also to get your videos up, and then you can upload them to, to YouTube. Um, but it's kind of similar to what you're speaking to about YouTube in the sense that, um, you know, you're making your videos work for you and they're meaningful and you can communicate. And of course it's all about lead generation. So I just wanted to throw that plug in there for you guys to check out one day.com as you're considering these YouTube videos. It's an easy cool. way to make them. Cool. Any questions or comments or feedback before I move on. We got to gotta go kind of quick because we're all right. We'll have to do another one because this is a lot of topics and we can. Yeah, you might want to uh, just jot some of this information down. Uh, um, I'm on YouTube at Internet Marketing Muscle down there, down there at the bottom and my website's up at the top. So um, we, we've kind of already dived into this, but get, you need to get your content ranked, right? Whether it's blogs or videos or whatever. Um, and like I said before, you can create all the content in the world, but if the search engines, Google and Bing don't rank it, nobody will see it. And I did want to come back to Google and Bing. Um, you know, they're kind of in an arms race right now, right? And, and who's got the best AI and who's going to win and, and, and all that stuff. And, you know, Microsoft owns Bing. Microsoft is a big owner of open AI, which is where chat GPT resides. They spent, they invested a billion dollars, I think in 2019 and reportedly they're in negotiations to, to invest another $10 billion in chat in open AI. Hmm. All of open AI's data is on Microsoft servers. It's their Azure network. So what they're doing now, Microsoft is doing now, they just made a big announcement, but it wasn't like news to anybody in the industry. They're um, incorporating all of the open AI, artificial intelligence uh, tools, data, whatever's in their Azure network. They're opening it up and incorporating it into all of their products. Bing is one of them, all their office products. So you can literally go to Microsoft Word and say, Hey, type me a white paper about X, Y, and Z, and it'll do it for you hmm. using the same technology as ChatGPT. 
So it's all going to be integrated. Google announced today or yesterday, I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, that they're um, kind of bringing out, I think it's called BARD. Um, and I don't know what that stands for, but um, it's similar to chat GPT. They have their own data sets, giant, I mean, they have enormous data sets that they can train their AI on. So it's an arms race right now, and it'll be interesting to see who takes the lead. I mean, you know, 22 years ago, Google didn't exist. Um, Yahoo was like the number one search engine. <laughs> Um, nobody thought that when I first heard of Google, I was like, who? <laughs> and, and, you know, five years later, they were the number one search engine. Maybe it could have been sooner. MySpace isn't, hasn't been gone that long and, and Facebook took over. Somebody's the, there's always going to be jockeying for position. And sometimes the, the, the people who are in the lead fall off and never come back or they fall off and they come back and they fall off and they come kind of like the browser wars, right? For years and years and years, it was um, Netscape. And then it was Internet Explorer. And now it's Chrome. So we'll see. All right. So how do you get your stuff ranked? We've kind of already talked about this. Create great content. It has to be good content, right? You have to op optimize your on-page SEO. That means how am I interlinking between my own web pages on my own website? Like I want to be able to tell people strategically and logically and um, kind of passively, if you want more information about what I talked about in this article, go here and I talk specifically about that. So that's accomplishing two things. Number one, it's telling, it's giving people an easy way to find the information that they're looking for if they want to dive a little deeper. It's also telling Google and the other search engines like, <clears throat> excuse me, like Bing, what other pages I have, right? <clears throat> One of the main ways that a, that, a, that a search engine bot finds your content is they find one page and then they follow all the links throughout your site to find all the other pages. If they're not all interlinked, they're not going to find them unless you do stuff like, um, you know, um, sitemaps, which we're not going to get into. Um, you also need to get backlinks. Those are external links or links from other sites linking to you. How do you do that? Well, there's a number of ways to do it, but I don't want to say it's easy because it's not, but you can guest blog on other people's sites and with a link back to yours, or you can do or earn what they call earned media. If you write good enough content, other sites will pick up your content and they'll link to you. Like, Let's say you let's say you have a partnership with a pull equipment manufacturer and you write a blog post about pull equipment. It doesn't necessarily even have to be about theirs, but it, let's say it's in their it's in their wheelhouse. They make something like that. They may link to your site to explain to their users in a way that they can't or don't want to. They don't want to take the time. They'll refer people to your website. That's that's a great backlink. All right, moving on. Um, and I talked about sitemaps. This is where you would submit a sitemap. So I'm not going to get too deep in, in the woods the weeds on that. If you want to ask questions, you can hit me up later. I know we're running out of time. Um, <clears throat> now, what about YouTube videos? How do I get those ranked, right? So it's, it like I said, it's, it's actually easier. There are three main parts to your YouTube videos. There's your titles, right? What am I calling this thing? That is going to be the first thing that people see besides the thumbnail. It's going to be the thing that gets people to click on your YouTube. It's going to be the thing that Google ranks you for, or I'm, I'm sorry, YouTube ranks you for. Then there's your descriptions. That all, that's all that stuff underneath the video that nobody ever reads. Well, Google reads it. And some people read it too. And that's where you're going to put some of your calls to action. And yeah, the click-through rate is not high, but it's better than zero, okay? Descriptions matter because this is your chance, talking about AI, Google isn't great. I did it again. YouTube isn't great at knowing what your video is about by looking at your video. 
It knows what your video is about based upon your title and description. So give it the most information and the best information you can about what's inside that video. It's kind of like, you know, you get a box at the store and you see the picture, but you want to know what's really inside of it. So there's a table, you know, there's an index or a table of contents or a, a recipe. What, what do they call it on, on food? You know, the, the, the food label, right? Ingredients. You want, yeah, ingredients. You want to know what's in, inside, right? Um, that's what the description is a, is a good function for. And that's where you insert your keyword phrases that you want to rank for. Tags. Tags are huge. YouTube says officially, we don't really look at the tags. But we know for a fact that they're looking at the tags, or at least they're looking at the, at the content of the tags, because we put tags on every one of our videos. And we know they're ranking. We're we're ranking those videos for the tags we put in those videos. Um, so it it's important to put tags in there. And the thing that makes this all kind of super easy, I mean, making the content isn't easy. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. But once you have the content and you upload it to video, making all this other stuff work, the titles, descriptions, tags is easiest if you use a thing called TubeBuddy, and it's what we use now. And it's not very expensive, but it's it's a nice tool to have. All right. I'm just going to leave this here. Um, these are all the different kind of themes we use for WordPress. We can send them out to everybody, too, if it makes yeah. it easier. We, we use uh, an email service provider called Aweber. Um, Rank Math is what we use for blog posts for, for optimizing them just like we use TubeBuddy for YouTube videos to optimize them. And then there's a thing called Publer, which helps you syndicate all of your content. Like if you put content on YouTube, YouTube has an RSS feed that you can plug into Publer that anytime you publish a video on YouTube, you can tell Publer, set these up to post at specific times or random times. Um, anytime a video is posted, Publer sees it and Publer can post it to your Instagram. It can post it to Facebook pages or groups. It can post it to, um, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, TikTok, all sorts of different things. A good way to get your, your, you know, to get your video seen by others is by posting them on other social media sites. So it's it's pretty easy to do. Um, real quick on newsletters. Does everybody know, does anybody know what a newsletter is from an email perspective? Okay. We generically call those emails that you get when you subscribe online to somebody's email newsletter and you start getting emails from them, we call those newsletters. They're not really newsletters, they're just emails. But the way we use newsletters is we, we collect email addresses of, of, of our avatar. Um, we encourage people to subscribe to our, our Aweber. Um, not everybody does, of course, but those who do, we can set up so that they get um, periodic emails from say Bo, for example, and we have kind of a standard format. It's like, there's an intro paragraph. Hey, how you doing? This is, you know, it's, it's November and, you know, the month's almost over. There might be something newsworthy in there. You know, it's about real estate. So might talk about that. And then we talk about, you know, we might post the latest video that Bo did. We might post the next recently three funded that, that Bo's, that Bo's holding recently funded deals. Those are really, really important because people want to know, um, you know, if, if you're looking for real estate financing, like for an, for a business acquisition, you want to know that this guy is actually funding deals, right? You know, um, so he's, he's proving that he's doing this work and that he's good at it. And, and we give details about the deal, right? Not obviously we don't use names and stuff like that, but we tell them, you know, what the price was, what the loan amount was, interest rate, terms, you know, kind of uh, 
aspects about the property, what, what, what had to be done. You know, we tell a little story. So it's kind of a blog post with an email newsletter. Um, you can automate these things so that let's say you have a blog and you post, let's just say you published five blog posts last week. You could roll those up into an Aweber email newsletter so that on Saturday morning, that all that content gets rolled up in a nicely formatted way and sent out to your email subscribers who can read it at their leisure on Saturday or Sunday morning. Um, and you can segment your audience. Like we don't just pull in everybody into one email list. We pull in, say, people we know who are interested in business acquisition or short-term rentals or, you know, you name it, house flippers. They could all be on se separate lists or they can be on the same list, with, but with different segmentation. And we can only, and we can send out those newsletters specific to that target segment, if that makes sense. It's all very easy to do um, and it's highly customizable. And the, the, the most important thing about email right now, and it's been this way for a long, long time, every dollar you spend on email marketing, you get about 40 bucks back. That's on average. So your mileage may vary, but I, I don't know too many places where you can spend a dollar and, and on average get 40 bucks back. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is who I am. My website's on the bottom. Um, I, like I said, I've been doing, I've been teaching people how to do stuff on the internet since 1996. And I can help you too. If you want, uh, you can contact me at my website on the contact me page, which is at the very top. Any questions or comments or feedback? Tired group. Everybody's like yeah. in overload. Everybody's like, all right, this is enough nerd stuff. I'm uh, digging it. That was great. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I think, Bill, we should we should start up the meetup again just for internet marketing. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it, do is. All. it is. You got to like break. This was a lot of like digestion um bill could you pull up youtube real quick i just want to give them an example of what we're doing yeah uh so what, you, what, are, what are we going to do do i need to be in my browser or yours no just go into any browser like we're just going to do searches and just show people what we do just to rank videos okay so like when we talk about long tail keywords you know like so i you know wanted to get SBA business, right? For people that, that are buying existing business businesses, expanding their businesses, or they're buying real estate. So, you know, like then we create. So you know, give, give, give me a keyword phrase you want me to search for. So like it's, it's competitive to do like SBA 7A loan, right? So I might do SBA 7A loan for a restaurant, right? I don't know if we're going to rank for this or not, but like yeah, the idea can, is, is that when people we didn't plan this ahead of time, but yeah, uh, so I don't rank for this one. Okay, let's do. Well, oh, there I am. Oh, that's others watched. There's yeah. a couple of videos. Okay, so let's do one that I know I rank for. At, uh, do SBA 504 Green Loan, right? So this is I'm niching down on different stuff. SBA 504 Green Loan, right? So there's not much competition, so I can easily rank for this these videos. So the first one is an ad. And look, there's one video, there's two videos on the top two organic, then there's more. Look, all these videos, all my cluster, right? Even more, there's more. Five okay. in the top 10. And then people, so then you can do the same thing for um, like, I don't know what else I rank for, but I rank for hundreds of stuff just in different, the SCR loans, 2022. There I am, right? So I talk about DSCR loans. My video ranks the top one, okay? And then if you go into my video, we don't have to do it on here, but if you go into it, like you can actually see all the things that I ranked for. Like if you go into like the back end, we don't have to maybe show them, but um, so if you look on the, we ranked 100% on SEO score. That's a tool we use. Um, and, and, and essentially yeah. we rank for like number one for like eight DSER searches, right? So anybody looking for a DSER loan, we own that. And so you guys can all do this kind of stuff for whatever your niche is. 
So you could be um, like, if, like for Ken, you know, Ken could do a topic on uh, uh, pool, best pool service Solano County, right? I bet nobody even ranks a video for that. Right. If you, if you went into search and did best pool service. I was going to do it in YouTube, but we can do it here. So probably nobody does it YouTube and you'd probably get tons of business out of it. Right. And this, I mean, this is just one search, right? Yeah. Huh. See, none of these so, are even close to what somebody yes. might be looking right. for. Yeah, I would definitely shoot a three or four minute video. You can do an overview. It could be like an, like you could just take little B-roll video of like your our VAs could easily create a video and you just talk for like two minutes. <laughs> Hey, this is, hey, this is Ken. You know, I've owned, you know, uh, I can't think of your name or your, your I, company, but yeah, I, <laughs> I've been pondering this. I actually, I've got a GoPro now. I'm ready to do this, man. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it so easy. And then listen, I, my videos are terrible and I get them to my VA and my VA makes them look like they're actually halfway good. Yeah. So but, you but, can just but, shoot but, it. But, but to be honest, I, I'm just going to be honest here. I, I don't think you're, videos need to be like production quality they need to be you right and, and if you're out in the field with your gopro and you're like filming what you do like people are going to eat that up right they're going to eat that up yeah uh, there's no doubt about it i mean the unpolished videos i think do better especially for a a, a local based business you know you don't need to be hollywood unless you're in hollywood i mean maybe then you do but i'm not saying solano county isn't hollywood but you know what i'm saying it's, it's a close second <laughs> <laughs> um so, so this is this right here is such low-hanging fruit that it for the for the 20 minutes it takes you to shoot the video and then you get somebody to edit it for 30 bucks it's the best 50 bucks you can spend right right it's and then way you cheaper can, than advertising. And then you can then you can do some stuff on your, your pool maintenance equipment that you're selling, right? Right. And then and then maybe you're starting to get views from somewhere else. And then, then Michelle's like, hey, I'm gonna throw some affiliate links in there for like these since like they're in they're in um Southern California, we're not gonna service them, but maybe you can make affiliate commissions from them buying that filter or whatever, right? right. And then it's just not a huge money, but over time. Mm -hmm every every dollar matters and yeah. the cool thing is your videos are going to be there forever right until you take them down or until youtube dissolves i mean what right so it's 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 content that's going to pay dividends i like to call them like youtube videos blog posts they're silent salespeople. they're there all the time they don't demand a wage yeah they don't talk back they it's show up work every day you know they're the perfect employee um and they're there all the time and they're going to be and and the cool thing is as if if things change you can change them it's harder to do that with a person and we also embed these sometimes we'll embed our youtube videos in our um blog posts so you want to show them sba uh just show them what we built uh this is we're testing this sba loans blog i mean it's still in its inf uh, infancy this is a, a just a, a blog website, so we're doing. Um, so, anyways, it you know it's not doesn't look like we're you know we're not putting high gloss. It's just a fi efficient writing, and we're writing like for example, we want to. I want to get people that want to finance a Goddard School franchise, which is like the total project cost could be anywhere from a, uh, like a, a million to like seven or eight million. So, if I get those SBA loans, that means you know, huge commissions. So I'm creating content around this specifically. So when somebody searches, um, like, like I'm doing a planet fitness franchise and it's a $3 million or $2.4 million loan. These people, even though there's not thousands of people looking when they find me, they have, they have, uh, intent and I'm answering their questions. And then they, uh, the call to action is book a call. They book a call. I get that deal that's a huge commission right so that's what i try to do and it's you know it, it takes a little bit of time but if you have 
you know, if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on paying, um, you know, doing a pay-per-click and you want something that's sustainable, this is what's really sustainable. We're, pl we're planning thousands of, we're cloning ourselves thousands and thousands of times, right. or hundreds of times at least. And, and once you create the video, it's it, like I said, it's there to stay. So it's not like you're having to create. Damn. At some, at some point you're going to be like, yeah, I think I got enough content out there, but you know what? You could always add more and that won't hurt anything. It's like, you know, putting another, putting another rod in the water. Right. Yeah. Um, the ocean's big. The internet's big. You start big. working on my tan. <laughs> Figure out what my good side is. <laughs> yeah, just do it too. And there's two of you. And Michelle can like just film you. It's so simple. You can just use a phone for right now. And you can get like a little microphone like this that plugs yeah. into your iPhone. It doesn't have to be, you know, right. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It's easy. You just got to get comfortable. You got to just press right. record. Okay. Yeah. So. Press record. You can always throw it any, away. Right. <laughs> you can hit, you can. So anyways, anybody have any additional questions? I know we kind of ran late and um, I still want to eat dinner, but uh, <laughs> and thanks everybody for coming. We had a small group, but I think this was actually better to be a small group and you guys ask good questions and appreciate everybody joining. And uh, let's see. Um, next week we have the ADU guy, my friend, Derek. I met him at an event and uh, he actually lives in Oregon, but he uh, is a retired firefighter and I think he's early, early forties. Uh, and he, and he got, he, he has a construction background too, but he, he got really good at identifying how to create additional living spaces such as ADUs with all the new regulations, right? We can take one property and we can convert it and have a, a junior ADU and possibly build a, you know, a secondary detached ADU. So basically the guy's really good at doing that, identifying how to do it. And on like seven properties, he created financial independence and doesn't have to work. Uh, but he's gonna, he's good at, he likes to talk about it. He likes to tell you what to look for in properties. Cause wouldn't it be nice to own less properties, but make more cash flow, essentially. And, and it's funny cause I got a call from a client and, uh, uh, actually, it was a referral, and the guy needs a little bit of money to finish an ADU. But uh, he had a single-family house; it had a basement. He built, he got an, uh, got it approved to put a two, two or three bedroom, two bath in the basement. He rents it out for seventeen hundred or eighteen hundred a month or something like that. And now he's going to build it. He's halfway done building the ADU in the back. So, like when it's all said and done, he moves out. He's going to have three units to run out. He's going to he's going to cash flow that thing or eight or nine thousand dollars a month off one property right so that's it's in oakland so it's pretty amazing so that's that's next week uh same on wednesday if you guys are interested then we have midterm rental coming up and then we have a, one on franchises if, if anybody's interested in in business entrepreneurship owning franchises that's on the 22nd and then uh al williamson uh from sacramento is on the 15th of march and then maybe bill will do some more of these um marketing components because i I, I actually like marketing more than actually you're doing the loans and stuff. I like it to me. It's kind of like, like, uh, setting, setting little booby traps and catching people that want to, you know, that, that will be your, uh, future clients. And if that's like more fun than actually doing a loan, I don't really like to do loans that much anymore. <laughs> um, but actually the getting the client and having the initial conversation is fun. And then everything else after is boring, but whatever your business is, I think, Utilizing these strategies will really help, and um, and then just just not being afraid of. When I was going to junior college, I never graduated, but I was terrified of uh, doing public speaking, terrified. And then I just like said, "Screw it! I'll just get up in front of people and start talking." I mean, you can go to Toastmasters and stuff. You just do it over and over again, and literally, uh, even though you still might not be that great. Editing will make you sound way better. And, um, you know, just don't, don't just relax and don't read. Don't, don't read your teleprompter. Just shoot off the hip. So Michelle can go to, you know, you guys can do a Q and A session on Zoom and you could just, you could just, uh, set up lofts for Ken to answer. Hey, Ken, you know, what's, you know, how do you check the pH level in a pool? Da, 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 da. that's one video 
you just created. Just so I encourage everybody to create the top 30 searches that your avatars are going to search for, do a little research, and then create videos on those top 30. That's exactly what how Bill and I started. And then we just now we start breaking it down even further. We can talk about like how to finance a Planet Fitness franchise using SBA financing. Nobody else is writing a blog about that and shooting a video. I rank first on Google for that. And if somebody hits that, I know that's like twenty or thirty thousand dollars in my pocket. So you guys can do all do the same thing with whatever your niches. Niches and the riches. Riches and the niches. Yeah. Anyways, we'll 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 send Bill's information. Maybe we'll start doing a, a, a like a monthly uh, powwow where it will remind me of the good old days. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what was the next one? putting this together yeah. Bo thank you yeah yeah and thank Ken? you yeah that was, uh... thank you Bill oh you're welcome I'm excited about the chat GPT I want to get in on more of that uh, do more of that discussion on chat GPT yeah I think I think next time Bill let's just focus on one like we'll just do chat GPT and we'll actually because I don't even think we did it justice yet. Like when we're Bill and I are doing it and we're doing it, it's like amazing, but it's hard to, cause we were kind of jumping around. I think the next one will get really specific just on chat GPT. Cause like, once you guys realize how like useful it is, you're just gonna be like, right, cool. Like this is, this is yeah. game on. Like I'll go in there and I'm like, okay, I need to create a, like it wrote this, a uh, uh, event invite for this yeah. meetup. I did the one for the franchise that we're doing on February 22nd. I wrote that. And um, we just gave it prompts. So it could literally do so much lifting for you. It'll create titles or it'll at least give you some ideas for titles. Like, you know, create a better title for this, you know, how to finance a, uh, a how to finance a building using SBA 504 financing. Create like five titles for it. it it'll do it all for you. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. Most of us here are in sales, right? Like, and so if we don't take action, nothing will happen. And um we got to move the needle bill and i have a, we say this every time we meet just move the needle like one percent a day move the needle one percent a day and uh the power of consistency we, we just became extremely consistent so i know if i meet with bill we're gonna move the needle right so what do i do i just meet with bill that's easy right and i move the needle every day because that's just who i became wake up go to the gym these same routines you do the same routine that you do every day and then, um, you know, then you'll reach your, your financial goals, whatever, whatever they are, whether it's raising capital by multifamily to do more real estate deals, to maybe transition out of your W-2 job, to sell more pool maintenance equipment. It's all the same. It's just a different spill. And then, I mean, Ken, you're natural for, for uh, I guarantee you, once you start doing video and you just like relax, you're going to be like, Ken, the pool guy. I already see the branding. You're going to get it like Ken, the pool guy. I'm going to sell ice <laughs> to Eskimos. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope to see you guys. Please. Well, it's nice to meet everyone virtually. Thanks again, Bill and Bo. Thank you. See you guys. Bill Thanks, guys. Bill, Thanks, Bill. Catch up. Thanks, guys. For sure. I'll work on those videos. Bo. Bye, Amy. All right. Hey, guys. Bo Exine here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over twenty years. And I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.